Yeah. You send to me? <laughs> oh my God. Roll the fucking intro. <laughs> Let's go home. Hey guys, welcome back to Wild Till Nine. And our special guest for this pod is Lauren's flatulence. My, f- oh, is it still called flatulence when it comes out your mouth? I believe so. Oh, I, I don't know. I just always associate it with farts. <laughs> Learn something new every well, day here on the Wild her, Till Nine podcast. Give her long enough. <laughs> Stop, drop, roll, rate, like, subscribe, share with a friend. Any more self promo? Um, shameless self promo. No, I think that's all of it. Ooh, ooh, start saving your money for merch. You keep saying that, but do we have samples I, here? I Is approved, the website up? I approved the digital version for these samples to get sampled yesterday. It's very cute. Who's your favorite porn star? Ooh, um, just coming in hot. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely Tyler Nixon. Um, We've looked him up before though, and yeah. he's busted. He's not busted. Sorry, Tyler, if you're a big fan of the pod. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not busted. Honestly, it was like in college. I feel like when I was really into like surfer skater looking dudes, and I feel right. like he really he really embodies that. Um, who's your favorite porn star? You speak me a Khalifa. Okay, I feel like that's a common one. Yeah. We just watched what show were we? Watching? Oh, Rami. We were watching Rami, and yeah. me and Khalifa was in it, and I was like, okay, mm-hmm. cool, 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 cool. Yeah. And I feel like Rami acted as awkward as you probably would if you encountered oh, her. What I would mean, you like, do? Hi. <laughs> My name's Jim. Your name's Jim. My name's Jim. I've actually watched a lot of interviews with her and oh. I really like her. Like her personality. Same. She's funny. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, I'm sure you no, do. No, no, no. I, uh, yeah, I think it was, like, was me a Khalifa. I don't like, I don't really know. Do you watch porn for the people or like the sex that's happening? Mm, I think uh, I'm pretty boring. Okay. What does that mean? I, I kind of like the same cut and dry things. So like I would, if I like the person or the channel because they make the same type of content, great. I, see. I just don't want like, and it's butt plug Thursday. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like well, we're a little bit outside my, my, my your, niche your here. Your niche, your niche. Yeah, okay. so, so butt plug Thursday is not for you. Well. Okay. So no, it's, it's not for me. It's not for you. It's not it's for not me. For you. You, you know these things. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Lauren's parents, <laughs> super excited to see you guys again for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> now that I know about Bub Plug Thursday. <laughs> woo! Okay, so small disclaimer, we're talking about prawns today. Yeah, I, I had um, a friend who used to call it free prawns, and for some reason that just stuck with me forever. Free prawns? Free prawns. What, why? I don't know. I don't know, They just him and his friends called porn prawns. Okay, got it. And so he'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna hit some free prawns tonight. And he had to like make sure and target the fact that it was free. He wasn't going to pay for it. I don't know. We just, it, the, the sentence was always just included free prawns. Like well, that was the, uh, the go-to. I think it's funny because the majority of at least my life up until the last five, like year or two. Yeah. Porn was always considered free. Right. Right. Just but you go can get and, the premium ones now, right? With no ads. You can. Jeremy can confirm. You hmm. can, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you can, mm-hmm. that is a purchase that one can that make. That one could do. One can make. Oh, I'm, it's like YouTube Premium though, no ads, you know? It's like, it's- No one buys YouTube Premium. I have YouTube Premium. As I said, no one buys. No, 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 but I, I would buy. I would buy YouTube Premium. Have you bought if, YouTube Premium? No, because they give it to me for free, because I'm a creator. All the creators sitting at home that like haven't been given YouTube Premium are like, what the fuck? Once again, <laughs> I had like a really light flow. Um, I never hardly had issues with boys. Um, everything kind of came naturally to me. No, uh, that, okay, none of that is, except light flow, true, but the other things, not true. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, it, I guess it depends how annoyed you are with ads. I almost feel like ads during porn would be more annoying than anything. Agreed, that's why I got rid of them. <laughs> I love confirm. that for you, babe. How much is it? Are there um, tiers? How does it work? Walk me through it. I actually purchased, I believe a lifetime membership. Oh. Yeah, I think they ran it like thanks, not Thanksgiving, I think Valentine's Day last year. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it was like a hundred bucks forever or something. Forever? Yeah. Oh, that's a really good deal. Uh, I know. Cause isn't Netflix like $13 a month? Even I just, have no idea. They've have been no idea. They've been hitting credit cards automatically for quite some time. Yeah. I, this is, this is off topic of premium subscriptions, but I saw a TikTok 
the other day. I don't know how I ended up on this like niche topic, but it was uh, a husband and a wife that were trying to rally couples to not watch porn. And that porn was um, something from Satan himself had delivered to the people. Well, were they like very traditional? No. Religious? No. Oh. No. But like, no. Okay. It, they were they like had hippie vibes. I didn't like do a deep dive into like their profile or anything, but super hippie vibes and were like trying to rally for people to be very anti-porn. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, disclaimer, I think the topic for today is- um, I love, the, like, for those of you who are only on audio, I really need to paint the picture for you right now. We've got a small little espresso glass that I purchased from HomeGoods that are so cute that Jeremy pushed back on, but now loves. And he's- Why is everything so negative? What? It's just such a you cute- You made a great purchase. It's such a cute you little made a great glass purchase. and you shit on me for it. And now you love the, love, the, love the espresso glasses. And he's just got like this really nice put together outfit on. He's got his good socks on. And just like the, <laughs> just like- Do I have bad socks? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would, say, I would say the workout ones, you know, some are ballier than others. But they're, they're workout socks. Yeah, those are your bad socks. No, they're just meant for, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> just the way that you're, it's so distinguished. Like, oh yes, look at this distinguished gentleman talking about free prawns today. <laughs> That's you right now. <laughs> would you like to do the disclaimer or can I get back to go it? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This is an emotionally charged topic. Yeah, for some people, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think it's important that although we um, are personable and share our opinions, truthfully, mm -hmm. to make light to the fact that, you know, some people probably do, you know, suffer or have some issues with this. And oh, we absolutely. don't mean to make light of that. No, 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 no. This is just like an open, honest discussion of our opinions and our experiences with things like porn and, and, and uh, OnlyFans. Um, but yeah, in no way, shape, or form, disclaimer, we are doctors or experts or professionals. Well, I'm pretty, no, anyway. I, I literally, I fucking knew it was coming. I set you up so good. <laughs> I, I it teed like, it up, I teed it up and there you hit it, you I'm hit it. A, I'm making this seem like I'm a lot more experienced than I am. But the point is, it was, it's been requested mm -hmm. about 14 dozen times. Yeah. And so here we fucking are. Here we are. Kick us off. Um, okay, so hot question that might be a little uncomfortable for, for those of you. And, and I'm gonna challenge you to step outside the comfort zone in the comments today. Is it okay to watch porn while you're in a relationship? Yes or no, and you can give as much context as you want. If you even wanna, wanna relay the answer in emojis, go for it. Um, people really seem to like that. We when won't we, pin um, this one. We won't pin this one. Yeah, no one's gonna put you on blast, but we love reading the comments. So this is a little selfish for us, but uh, let us know. Lauren, how important is it to remember to wear protection? Is is this a trick question? I don't think so. I mean, I, I just know that our audience is practicing safe sex, so I mean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? I'm talking about protecting your eyes from harmful blue light. Um, well, this is awkward. That's all right. We've still got time to turn this one around. Uh, so what is your favorite part about our new Blue Blocks glasses? Oh, no, this is a good question. For me, it's definitely their science-based design that keep my eyes from straining. Uh, okay, what else? Um, their website was super easy to use and their shipping was super fast. Right, 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 right. But anything else that's exciting and impressive about Blue Blocks glasses? I feel like I feel like you might just be digging for me to say something about how cute you look in them. What? No, I hadn't. Uh, I, I hadn't really even thought about it till mm -hmm. you till you said something. Mm -hmm. But yes, you do kind of maybe definitely look handsome when you wear yours throughout the day. What? I had no idea. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> get your energy back, and sleep better, and block out the unhealthy effects of blue light with blue blocks. Go to Blue Blocks today and get free shipping worldwide and 15% off your first order with code WILD. That's B-L-U-B-L-O-X dot com and use the code WILD for 15% off. Ooh, okay. I feel like, actually, let's start Let's start easy. Let's start easy. Okay. Um, What's, what's your opinion and what do you think about um, one partner in a relationship liking and commenting, saving, whatever it may be, interacting on social media with um, with whatever the gender they're attracted to's profile. Like in general? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like Steve likes women. 
Yes. Steve follows hot women. Yes. Steve comments and not nah, nah, comments. Steve um, commonly interacts or engages with in some capacity with hot women's profiles. Yes. In a relationship while Steve is in a relationship. Well, would Steve be comfortable liking or commenting or doing it, whatever he's doing in front of his girlfriend? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Steve. I'm not well, sure. That's the difference right there. <laughs> okay. Walk me through it. I mean, it's one thing where Steve follows um, Cindy, Nicole, and Jessica, uh, Sarah. Okay. And Steve follows those folks and there's uh, a, a relationship that happened historically or previously, or mm. there's like a bigger story there. That so he there's has a, context to that person. Right. That, that would be a negative piece if the girlfriend found out that right. would need to either be discussed or probably put some space between them. Right. To so me, like an ex-girlfriend, an ex hookup or someone that they've had drama with in the past, like some kind of personal connection that ended in a not so great way. Right. Or ended in a fine way. And there's right. nothing to, there's no reason to have any issues there in security because right. there's a, an end to that story and it's already been talked about right. to, to make it like a bigger point. Like, I guess like more simple, do you need to hide what you're doing? Right. Like, right. If you feel guilty about it, it's probably not right. Right. And it's, but then, you know what, actually I take that back because I feel like there's some dudes that I know that are just like recklessly liking hot girls photos. Like, and I mean, you see it on TikTok all the time. I feel like where girls are like finding funny ways like they'll be they'll see their boyfriend and there's a mirror behind them and they're just scrolling through hot girls liking 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 heart heart double tap double tap and yeah I feel like some guys don't feel guilty about it you know what too I I feel bad for the younger generation not feel bad but I just feel like there's probably different struggles than we faced because there's so many attractive people, so many attractive people in the world. And social media feels like it puts them at your fingertips. And when you're 15 and insecure as fuck and you have your first boyfriend, first girlfriend, whatever it is, like I feel like it would be so not nerve wracking, but I'd be so insecure. You know, it's like if you find your boyfriend like looking at other hot 15 year olds that you think are pretty and prettier than you. Like, I just feel like I'm I'm so glad that I was the generation before that. 100%. But like also the only reason that I think that this is, you know, it is okay is if you're in a situation where the girlfriend isn't going to be upset about that as long as she knows what's going on. You know what I mean? Right. Like it, the the relationship piece is two-sided. If you have someone who, if you're in a relationship with someone who's incredibly self-conscious about X, Y, and Z, I probably wouldn't go out and find other girls who had X, Y, and Z in right. the girl's perspective right. and go and just double click, double click everything that they post. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so it's, it's situational. I knew it, I knew it was coming, I knew it was coming. <laughs> no, but like- <laughs> It is. I, I have been in relationships in the past where I would, never be as blase about mm -hmm. the people I follow or the things that I would say or the things that I would like throw a like to because everything was loaded. Right. And it right, wasn't like, right. a, it, not, it was not healthy. Don't get me wrong. And I don't think that every healthy relationship should have the like prerequisite of being able to like and talk and do whatever you want to do to anything. No. But what I am saying is that there has to be a communication and understanding layer there. Right. That is... Right, like if you're both insecure about it and that one little piece of like not liking random hot girls, hot guys, whatever it may be's photos makes your relationship healthier, then go that route. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, yeah, I think I think I, I fully agree. I think it's situational uh -huh. and um, it's, it's dependent on, you know what I think too? I think if there's an insecurity piece there, it probably runs through a lot of other factors of your relationship. And I think if you can't communicate your way through that, um, I think it's it's tough because social media is so prevalent in everyone's life now for the most part right. that it's not something that you can really just like omit. My favorite part of the guys that like you or, and me are friends with that like, you know, I've broken up with their girlfriend or ex-wife six months ago, a year ago, two, three right. years ago. And every fucking picture I see that the ex posts, the other ex is liking. And yeah, I'm like, yo, yeah. Bro, it literally happened an hour ago with our friend. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and so, and like, that's, what's hard too, is that it's a public facing thing. So it's like, it's almost the optics of optics. it. Optics. It's the optics exactly. of it. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Cause like when we saw our friend liking his ex-girlfriend's photo, we're like, oh, it's like, you got a new girl now. So like, what are you doing liking this girl's photo? But like, it probably is just like, they ended on good terms. They're friends now. It's totally fine. But we're like, ooh, the tea is hot. The tea is hot. I mean, from an optics perspective, cause yes. I'm big on optics. There, I would probably think twice about liking something based off of what someone who doesn't know the situation right. could look at that and think more. I'm probably a little bit more cautious on that. No, I'm 100% more cautious on that than I am. Oh, if I like this picture of hot girl in bikini, yeah. Lauren's going to be mad at me. I, there's never like, I, I, I have no issue because I don't think. Did that, you like a hot girl in a bikini today? No, that's right. No, <laughs> no, but like I would not like it, like especially if it was like a friend of mine. Right. Moreover, because not everyone in the world, and we've run into this before, knows that me and girl in bikini are friends. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, and this is like a weird thing that a small pool of people will relate to because it's more of like an influencer problem. Yeah. But it's like obviously there's a fan base and a viewer base there, a viewership that um, is is can see all of that as well. And so, for example, Jeremy um, when he was in music used to work with a bunch of influencers. Um, who dabbled in music, especially when like the Roast Yourself um, era was popping. And so there are lots of pre-existing relationships that were there long before I came into the picture. And and I want to, and I want to specify too, like existing friendships. And so it's like, if a mutual friend, cause a lot of them are mutual friends um, that I've known separately from you as well. And it's, it's, it's the optics, it's the optics. And it's so totally. hard, you have to be like, okay, like, if a fan that has no context sees this, what does it say? Sucks. It sucks. <laughs> but it's true. I know, because I know. Something I, so simple as a double tap can come with so much. And it's a pain in the ass. And there are probably a handful of girls that I specifically will think to myself, there are too many fans out there who of of this girl or of just like YouTubers in general who are looking for reasons to dig up drama and I'll just stay away from it. You know what, actually, this is this is like a, a weird thing that I would never talk about anywhere else except for the pod, I feel like. I had a girl um, almost every single day message me a copy and paste message saying that Jeremy was liking so-and-so's photos. And every single day. Which I was. Which, which he which was, I was. Which he was. And so this girl was someone that he literally grew up with who's like eight years younger that they knew through like, whatever it was. Like- Music. Music, grew up in the same hometown, whatever. Like literally the most like, it just like genuine pre-existing friendship from your past. And this girl was so adamant on blowing your cover and outing you to me and just like trying to stir up all this shit. But it's like, where does that come from? I mean, I think the intention behind it is good. Like they probably are just, they think that is they're it? protecting me. Is it good? I mean, I don't know. I can't I don't imagine. Know. The internet's so fucking weird. Let me get in your business. Yes, yes. And assume that I know so much about your personal life yeah. that I'm going to insert myself via the internet when we haven't met, right. when I haven't met your boyfriend, your girlfriend or whatever, and I'm going to like flag this for you. Yeah. I mean, what? I think it'd be one thing if you were out in public and you saw someone's boyfriend that you knew was together and you took a picture of it maybe or something. Like even that is shady as fuck. Yeah. But I mean like- it's something so public as a like on someone's photo, like this girl was determined to start some shit. Eventually I just messaged her back and I was like, yo, honestly, it was like, this is the situation, please stop. I like, like stop. I, just stop, please stop. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's, uh, let's dive into something a little heavier. Oh, heavier? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like Instagram is like the lightest version True. of, uh, of not, I mean, I guess softcore porn. <laughs> I mean, it's becoming that, yeah. It's becoming that, yeah. yeah. I actually, there was actually just, um, I was listening to something where um, you now on Instagram can't push your boobs together um, while you're topless, but you can cover your boobs. Interesting. Yeah, it's a- uh, Is that where for guys and girls? I don't know. Mm -hmm. See, that's where I think it's good. Yeah. So if I take my shirt off and I push my- Boobs together? You, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get taken down, you get flagged. You well, can hold, you can hold, because that's art. I got some great packs, An expression. I mean, these things are- They're basically the same size as mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, back onto the porn side. Okay. Um, I, porn is so commonly watched. Um, I would say- It's like a third of the internet. Yeah, a third of the internet. Actually, I have a crazy stat, but 
while I look that stat up, um, what do you think? Is it okay to watch porn when you're in a relationship? Yes, but <laughs> if and only if it's something that isn't a secret from your significant other. Right, 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 right. And so to me, porn in, in like anything, in moderation <laughs> and also, <laughs> but like it's true, like is is it okay to, to drink while you're in a relationship? Well, sure. Are you getting right. shit faced every night and it's impacting your relationship negatively? Well then no. Or is it okay to smoke weed in a relationship? Probably, except for if you're getting stoned and not going to work and not picking up the kids. All these things, right? It's just like, just like with everything else that's an indulgence, it has to be something that is in moderation. And if that thing is starting to take over your life right. or is negatively impacting other sides of it, then no. Right. But that's not because it's in a relationship. That's because it's negatively impacting your life. I like the comparison to like weed, alcohol, all of that. Cause it's the same thing. It's something that, you know, you can enjoy in moderation and can even add, I would say, to a lot of situations. I know a lot of couples that like to watch porn together. Yeah, I don't that one I'm, is weird for me, but yeah. I feel like we've tried that once and we're like, yeah, it didn't we're not into us. it. We're yeah. like, <laughs> It's like Maybe a, not. It's not Maybe for not. us. Not it's for not for us. us. Not we for went, us. You know what? We gave it the old college try. Yeah, we gave it the old college we try. Did. We gave it the old college try. I really do think there's there's a lot of of pros to porn. Like I feel like especially for Walk us through it, Craft Girl. I mean <laughs> Craft Girls fucks. Um no, I just think that there's so much that we don't know about our, our about ourselves like when you're growing up you know and like obviously like a uh, post legal age to watch porn but you can learn so much about yourself like what you're into and it's like i feel like there's so many i feel like we get so many messages too of people who have like never been in a relationship still a virgin haven't had their first like sexual encounter or whatever and i think that it's like it's not a textbook, but it's kind of, you can just learn so much from the internet. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of shit that you should, you should not, you should unlearn, you should unsee. And there you should, should be a beginner's guide. That you ever saw. Yeah. But I do think that it, it helps you like explore what you're into. Right. And maybe even your sexuality. Right. Yeah. Right, I, right, think, right. I, I think there's lots of pros yeah, to if it. If you keep finding yourself clicking the other tab and going, man, I sure like this stuff. Yeah. My, maybe you like my, that stuff. Might be an indicator. Maybe, like, maybe you love Butt Plug Thursday. Maybe you like Butt Plug Thursday. <laughs> Maybe you like Butt I'm Plug so glad Thursdays. we found the title for this episode. <laughs> I know. Butt Plug Thursday, here it comes. God, demonetize. <laughs> no, but like uh, to to be clear though, like I'm very blase about, yeah, I think it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because it's fine for us, right? Right, right, it, right. The, the difference here is the guy, girl, anybody who is turning to that outlet instead of their significant other for sexual gratification or would right. rather spend time with porn than that. Like that's a problem. That's a problem for sure. You know what I mean? If I was sitting downstairs just going through Jergens bottles and never wanting to have sex. Yeah. Did you not get the Jergen? Was that? You know, I got that the lotion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got thought, it. I just thought it was going to be funnier than it was. Oh, yeah. It didn't. It didn't hit. Didn't Sorry. Hit. I mean, like I, I got it and I accepted it, but it, I didn't, it didn't. Keep oh, going. Keep that's going. tough. Sorry. If I was going through the Jergens bottles and not wanting to have sex with you, but you know why it wasn't funny is because I know you don't use Jergens. I don't use Jergens. Yeah, yeah, that's why it wasn't yeah. funny. I was like, damn. Uh, yeah, sorry, babe. I don't, I don't mean to out you. It like wasn't that authentic. Either. Yeah, it wasn't authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> in this hypothetical world where I use Jergens and I didn't want to have sex with you, but I was, you know, <laughs> right, only really, interested. Yeah. really utilizing that Pornhub Premium subscription, mm -hmm. that would be a problem. I think also too, I I have friends who are in relationships where the sex drive is just not quite balanced, and whoever has you know the higher sex drive, I think, turns to porn to. Uh, help not uh, mediate's not the right word to to balance it. You know what I mean. So they're able to you know do their thing as many times as a day supplement. as they need to supplement supplement. But I think that mm, that I no don't know. no no supplements because that means replace. That's not the right word. I don't. Yeah, but I I think I think to meet their needs. Right. Because I feel like that as can actually- As to not annoy the other. As to not another, yeah, exactly. To not annoy the other person. <laughs> right. Or like if someone's going through like a really busy phase in work, you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's like you just need to go do that instead. Yeah. And that's okay. Cause I think that almost brings harmony to the relationship. You know, if you need to help balance it out, that can be one of the ways to kind of help get you there, I think. Story time. I remember always in, in college in particular, mm -hmm. I would always um, <clears throat> try to- uh, Oh, I can't wait for this. Hmm, how to use the right words. How, I have a question. Um, so my college experience, my dorm rooms, we all had our own individual rooms and we had a common area like living room and kitchen and, and bathroom. Mm -hmm. But 
I feel like in the States, it's super common. And like a lot of universities and colleges have one room, two bedrooms, right. two, two beds, sorry, one room, two beds. How do how do people masturbate in that situation? You just wait till they're they're gone at class. You Quickly. Know, learn their schedule. Quickly. So you learn how to bust a nut real quick. Oh, yeah, I guess. Okay. You know, when you say it so eloquently. We had a sign um, on the boys' bathroom door of the showers, the communal showers, that um, they wanted boys to stop masturbating in it because it was like fucking up the drainage situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but that's, I think, where that comes from. God. Is that like one room, two Guys beds? Guys are so fucking gross. <laughs> but like that's peak horny. All these 21-year-old dudes, these 19-year-old oh, yeah. guys, like, yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I just can't imagine being the person typing that out, going to the printer, taping it on the door, being like, what is my job? But honestly, anyway, yeah. I digress. The point I was telling you was, I so remember- wait, I, I, Yeah, your story, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I would would purposefully um, find time prior to going out right, um, to alleviate any 21 year old Jeremy- Horniness. Uh, Horny decisions. Okay. Um, by trying to like clear that out ahead of time. Certainly, clear it out. Certainly, <laughs> certainly didn't all work, but there was right. the intention was there. Yeah. Yeah. I actually know um, a lot of male uh, f- actors who, before they do any kind of like sex scene or even like a making out scene that that could um, arouse them, right? They'll go jack off beforehand because they they want to just like not provoke any kind of awkward moment um, when their dick is up against the other person's leg. <laughs> Yeah, what is that on this one? For what, the audio listeners, which male I just, actors we're I just about? slung a whole arm as the day. Yeah. <laughs> just I don't make know. out yeah. scene. Okay, so this is kind of a new thing for our generation as well, um, especially in relationships and like making the dynamic, changing the dynamic of just like dating and stuff. Uh, OnlyFans. OnlyFans is so crazy popular. And personally, like I'm an advocate for the platform. I think it's, I think it's fucking sick. Um, but what do you think about subscribing to um, people's OnlyFans when you're in a relationship? Situational. Situational. I mean, it's one of those things where if you're subscribing, to me, there, sh- there should be boundaries that are set either at you as you as an individual because you have the self-control to do that or you have an understanding with your partner. Right. right. The sketchy thing would be, are you subscribing secretly? Would you, mm. would you, if your partner asked, would you have to lie about it? Would right. you have to lie the way that you use the platform? Right. Cause like I'm all for marketplaces that put boundaries in places to keep people safe. Right. 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 I think OnlyFans is basically just like another platform that offers similar things as um, any kind of like porn website. Um, except you're supporting the individual and obviously OnlyFans takes a cut. I think it's 20%, which is actually like very standard management fee in LA anyways. Um, so I think like that's that's pretty fair. With the market, it has to I mean, pay its own bills. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, YouTube takes way more. YouTube takes way more. YouTube takes a fat old, fat old chunk of that. Anyways, um, I the only thing that I think is is different is that OnlyFans has so many creators that are very small and can be so much more accessible that I I don't and I don't know anyone personally that's done this but I feel like it would be very easy to find them on social media and connect with them almost on a more micro I I don't know the only people that I know I feel like I know people on OnlyFans that are like huge mm-hmm. Tana uh, who are huge and like are very like has a team working on that thing. Right, right, right. And I know people that have small followings on it. Yeah. That like I've known for decades, right? Right. And the ones that I feel like are on the smaller side are very cryptic and private and like have like layers in place to keep them from interacting with them as like they're themselves right, and have more like right. a pseudonym. But yeah. I'm sure that's not the case for everybody. Right, 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 right. And so I feel like that just like opens up a whole other like realm of someone going and doing something like in private that's like sketchy that they feel guilty about. And so it's like subscribing. Cause I mean, I think it'd just be like a weird dynamic if like you subscribe to someone on OnlyFans and then you followed their Instagram and responded to like all their, I don't know, it just feels so much more accessible, I guess. Well, there's a time and a place for everything. And you trying to like find and cross those boundaries like I was talking about right. is where things get into trouble. Totally. Right. Totally. And I think it's it's hard because I think there's like because it comes with a sense of intimacy and personal whatever that is, mm-hmm. 
I think it's very easy to overstep those boundaries. So I think it's that individual's job and responsibility to a degree self-regulate. Yeah. Cause it's not like you're gonna like call your ex, or you're gonna call your girlfriend or boyfriend every time. Like, hey, is it weird if I watch this video <laughs> or would it be cool if I do that? Yeah, like, of course you're not. too much communication, yeah. too much, too, too much. much. <laughs> you're not gonna do that. It's like, yeah. I'm gonna share an OnlyFans account. Like, hey, right. yeah, yeah, I got it. Ooh, babe, I saved a real good bit today. Make sure you watch it later. <laughs> so I, I hop in, it's just all just like, wow, that's not what I, that's, that's not, not quite what I'm into. Uh, but okay, okay, got okay. It. okay. But no, I mean, I just think like, are you, the marketplace is there to create boundaries that keep people safe. Are right. you going, are you trying to circumvent that? And mm-hmm. that's a problem. If you're not, you're probably okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. I, again, situational, if it works and the communication is there in your relationship. And also like, are you able to, cause people get similar to gambling and similar to anything, right? Like you can get addicted to it and mm-hmm. you lose track of, oh shit, that I'm, I'm too much in. Right. I feel like you lose touch with reality. Okay. And so here comes my next question. And this oh, you is, got, you co- you have questions prepared well, today. I, yeah. Yeah. I did a little research cause I wanted yeah, to I know, so. I wanted to know about OnlyFans, like more of like the back end of it and just like what the rules and regulations around it are. Cause it's kind of a new platform. Um, okay, so do you think, and I feel like this is the most common anti-porn statement that I see, like those hippies on TikTok that I saw. Right. This was, I, I did a little deep dive through the comments just to see what people were saying because it was it was war. It was war in the comments. Well, people are very charged by it. Polarizing, polarizing um, um, topic for sure. And so do you think that porn creates um, like unrealistic fantasies and scenarios for People who watch it? Probably. Yeah. Uh, and I, but just like anything else can, right? Yeah. I mean, if you watched any movie ever, including Disney movies. Or even like pro sports. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it gives you a false sense of how the real world is. Right. Just because you can find some program or some piece of entertainment that shows you that something is possible does not mean it's um, possible for everybody. Yeah. Here's where I, and this is, I guess, like, serious, but also it's like uh, something to understand. I think that, I don't know what age I discovered porn by any means, but like, I think growing up or like being in college, right. I think that there's certainly an air of unrealism of like, that's not real. That would never happen. That's like fantasy. And I think eventually to a degree, you almost learn by seeing things Mm. that aren't necessarily a part of your normal life. Like Like in real life, you see things in real life or you see things in porn? I think both. Right. I think you discover, like the more you know and the more you learn Mm -hmm. and like I'm sure the most traditional of of Christians and people that are very spiritual, obviously, like they have their own beliefs and it's very much aside from that. And like, they don't want to partake in that at all. I understand that. Yeah, totally. That's your your belief. I grew up in more Sunday school services than than most. I've worked at churches. I totally get that. I Mm -hmm. understand that that's, that's, that's a belief system. On the other side of that, like it is a real world and things happen. And and when you go to college, this shit is very much part of the upbringing. And I think you have to be able to like kind of draw the line in the sand for yourself. So like, this is fantasy, this is entertainment, this right. is real world. Right. And where do I fit into that? Right, right. I, I mean, I think that's a great description. That was a bit of a, a tangent, my apologies. No, 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 no. That was, that was, I, I liked hearing that opinion for sure. Um, I think <laughs> this is on a much less serious note. I think that I had unrealistic expectations for my body almost. I think every guy in the world can agree with that. Like when I, not not even in like the size of like shape of like boobs and ass and stuff like right. that. I literally was just like, oh, dick, mom, if you're listening, I'm just maybe, yeah. maybe just, just hop la, out la, now. La, 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 la. <laughs> well, no, like sex was such a struggle for me for so long when I was like first starting to be like sexually active and I just like in sex, it just like in shove three dicks in there all at one time. And I was like, oh my, I'm sorry. I'm, how did, how did, my, so mine, but yours. And I was so, I was like, I, I just don't think that we have the same you have a vagina, your vagina does that. I don't, I just don't understand. I don't understand. And um, I remember the first time I saw a fisting video. <laughs> D- doesn't everybody. <laughs> oh my God. And that's the shit that like, and here's from- me barely being able to fit like a, a average sized dick in me. And, and just like someone's able to ram a fist up there. And I'm like, I'm sorry. We all have our own talents. I guess, I guess it's like the person at the party who's like, I can put my fist in my mouth. Oh, actually Remy can put her fist in her mouth. <laughs> That's Remy Cruz. That's Remy Cruz. Uh, <laughs> shout out Cruz pretty basic. <laughs> it's like, guys, my party trick and then rams her fist in her mouth. Can she open her fist in her mouth? Yeah, she really can. Good for Cal. Yeah. Oh um, my God. Oh my God. 
Yeah, so it wasn't like I was like, oh, why doesn't my body look like that? It was more like, why doesn't my body do that? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and I also feel like it's like you can watch, there's so many different categories of porn too, that like when something feels so foreign to me, I'm like, oh yeah, this is not something I'll ever encounter. But I wish that there was a, a better way to, I don't personally know how to go about this convert. Like, as someone who speaks for a living and right. talks about things that are slightly uncomfortable all the time, because yeah. it's money and people are always uncomfortable about like negotiating. Uh-huh. I wish, and I'm sure that when I have a kid, I will be equally as clueless as, how, as to like, how to go about this. But right. like, I'm going to go out on a limb that every guy, no, no, no. I'm going to say a bold statement. Every guy I've ever met has watched porn. Okay. Just, it's just a bold statement. Like yeah. has stumbled upon it at some point in time. Right. So if every guy or, you know, 99.9% of guys that I come in contact with in, in my nearly 30 years in the world has some experience with porn growing up, why would it be that parents are so incredibly, you know, like hammer down about it is bad. You cannot watch it. It is terrible. And there's no room for it. Well, I think that falls in the same category as when you're in sex ed in school and they're like, if you have sex, you will get pregnant and die. Right. And I'm not in sitting here in encouraging parents to go show porn to their 13 year old at all. Right. Not, not at all. I'm not condoning that. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is the fact that it is there, it exists and you have the uh, ability to kind of go and see that whenever you'd like. Cause it's the internet, it's a free mm-hmm. place and you can mm-hmm. probably cover your tracks too. So the biggest challenge or hurdle, I think that for a parent in particular, and this is something obviously we don't have like firsthand experience with, but like as a guy who has seen porn and every single guy I've ever come in contact with ever has some experience or more experience, or at least at some point in time, checked out porn. The common denominator, I think for the folks, I think who are a little bit too, um, invested, invested, or don't know where that line is, is the folks that feel like they had to hide early on or weren't able to Mm. know how that toolkit works. So every time they went to that place, it was dark, it was bad. It was a sin. And even dabbling in it for the first part was was so taboo right. that you might as well, well, what else is out there? Because right, I'm already right, doing right, something right, bad. Right, right. I'm already doing something bad. Right. And it's like, I get the slippery slope there. And of course, I think the obvious answer from my mother would be, well, then don't watch it at all. <laughs> I get that. Sorry, Donna. The, the point is, it's just like for people that are trying to like figure themselves out and learn right. something from it or an experience, I think that it would be nice to know that like, turning on Pornhub and going on a couple of categories, you're not going to like combust into flames as a sinner. Like Satan's not going to come out of the earth and swallow you. Right. But like, well, I almost feel like mainstream media, like 50 shades of gray, like that was some fucking hardcore shit. And like, that's not a porn category that personally I would venture into. Right. So it's like almost seeing that is like more polarizing than anything that I've seen in porn aside from that one fisting video. And, um, like it's like, you're going to encounter that no matter what. So you might as well have some kind of guidance. And I don't know what that looks like from a parent standpoint. Either. Yeah. I really don't. I, yeah. I like there's, I, there's no it's, good way. You know what? As a, like, as a, as a, woman, I almost feel like I would love if parents sat down because I'm straight, they're, they're straight boys. And we're like, this is degrading. Never do this. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's like what I, cause I mean, like sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll watch porn and there'll be something that happens that I'm like, absolutely the fuck not. Like it just makes me my, my stomach turn. I'm like, that's so degrading. And there's so much of that. There's so much of that. And it, it turns my stomach. And I wish someone's fucking mom was standing behind them being like, Tommy, if you ever do that, I will, I will. And like, that's, that's like what I wish the parenting and education was like. Cause then they're, they're like, okay, okay. Maybe I won't ever try that because I bet, I bet there are people who have gone and seen that and tried that in real life. And, and it doesn't go the way that it went in the porn for them. I'm just thinking of like all of like the, the false narratives that like guys write up in their heads if they haven't had any experience. Also any of like the, the babysitter, the stepmom, it's like those, those like stories that porn like totally glorifies into like the, the sex industry. It's, it's it's insane. It's insane. What? Stuck porn. Stuck porn? Stuck porn. What do you mean stuck porn? I learned about stuck porn on, uh, (laughs) listening to. David Dobrik, Jason Nash uh, views. Okay. It's when someone gets stuck uh-huh. somewhere. Yeah. And the person that comes and helps him out has sex with them first. Oh, oh, and like in Kingsman, we were just watching Kingsman. Remember stuck the porn. princess and right. then Eggie came and- Well, no, no, no. This is more like, oh, I'm doing the laundry. I got caught in the laundry. 
Now my ass got, is out. I got caught in the law. La- I'm stuck in the laundry I'm machine. I'm in the dryer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, I, I just, mean, but also like, I feel, okay, but like, I feel like the mainstream version of that is like elevator with like the elevator breaks and then they fall in love and they fuck in the elevator. Is that stuck porn? No, it's not stuck porn. But they're stuck in the elevator. No. No, so someone's it, literally stuck. But they're Stucks. no, you're, it's too wide. So, but you're literally saying like physically lodged in something. Anyway, the whole point of this was like <laughs> at any point in time, if Lauren's ass literally got stuck in the dryer and I came from behind and was like, oh, this is a good time. I'd be single. I'd be fucking single. <laughs> like, like, like that. Right. And that's reality. Can you imagine just like, Hey babe, what's going on? What the fuck are you doing? I'm like, Jeremy, call 911. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so someone I, I someone needs to educate um the viewers of stuck porn and and also the stepmom babysitter realm right that that 99.99 percent of the time is not reality one of today's sponsors is a company that i'm genuinely so personally connected to and have used in the past here on wild till nine we're big advocates for mental health and feeling your best mentally i personally struggle with stress and pretty severe anxiety as we've mentioned in past episodes and BetterHelp is an incredible platform that offers a a safe and private online environment to receive professional counseling from licensed therapists. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed therapist. You can send a message to your counselor anytime in the comfort of your own home and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response. You can also schedule weekly video or phone session for face-to-face counseling. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling with options for financial aid. BetterHelp is a worldwide service and specializes in depression, anxiety, stress, relationships, trauma, sleeping, anger, family conflict, LGBTQIA plus matters, grief and self-esteem. When my anxiety was in a really bad place and I was having trouble just leaving the house, I used better help to receive counseling at home and having that option in a time of need was incredible. Everything you share is confidential and you can check out testimonials posted daily on their site. We want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash WT9. That's the number nine. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash WT9. Do you think Snapchat made Snapchat knowing that it would be like the biggest nude sender ever? Like, do you think that they had to have, like someone had to be like, oh, this is great for sending nudes. I mean, we know one of the first 50 hires who was on the product engineering team there who confirmed that. Oh, shut up, really? Yeah, I mean, it was dick pics for sure. Oh, I mean, my God. He said that like, uh, friend of mine, very close, was very much like he was at Apple or Twitter. Okay. And uh, heard about Snap and like the idea, whatever. And was very much like, I'm going to a startup that is specializing in dick pics that disappear after oh, 10 seconds. Oh my God. And like, it wasn't, it was, they always had ideas and bigger than that. Right, but like right. the, the general consensus there was like, we're kind of making uh, disappearing penis pictures. Of <laughs> <laughs> disappearing penis pictures. To be fair, the only type of penis picture that anyone wants is one that disappears Disappears, quickly. a disappearing p- penis yeah. picture. Yeah. Uh, hey, real quick disclaimer, guys, your dicks are ugly. Don't send them. <laughs> Does that? Like if, if she asks, <laughs> confirm like seven times. Right, and just make sure. Cause it's ugly. It's ugly. It's it's a uh... guys. No. <laughs> Your dicks are ugly. <laughs> Every guy right now listening to our three percent male listener are like, man, I thought I kind of had a cute. No, dick. you don't. Shit. You don't. Shit. You don't man. have it. No. Shit. No one wants to see it. Nobody. <laughs> Fucking nobody wants to see it. Yeah, I mean. She's appeasing you. It, yeah, sure. Oh my God, it's so great. And no, that, and no, no. Dick dick. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like every time someone has a leaked nude, especially from like the Gen Z um, age, it's it's always from Snapchat. And it is, isn't it? I, and, and okay, like, I totally understand that they were like, okay, we're gonna give you a notification if someone screenshots it. But it's like, once it's been screenshotted, it's still fucking screenshotted. Like now I just know that it's been screenshotted. Also like working in tech, if it hits a server, it can be cached. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like yeah. It, the cloud is not, the, it's not a cloud. It's somebody else's computer. Right. Just right. so everyone knows. Like when you send a nudie. It hits a server and then that server hits your phone. You ping it. So it has to live somewhere. It, has, it goes somewhere. So if it is a, a, a tangible medium, 
<laughs> it's, it's tangible. It can be found again. I assure you. Right, 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 right. Within, you know, a sea of worldwide other dicks. Um, but it can be found again. What a visual. A sea of dicks. All the colors of the world. Yeah. And dicks. That's so nice. That'd be a nice um, a piece of art for the living room. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I am doing a little bit of redecorating, but I don't, I don't know if that's the uh, the missing piece to our uh, our aesthetic, you know? But like, what's funny is I remember Snapchat like coming out and thank God Snapchat came out in college mm, for me yeah. and not in like high school or middle school. Cause I am sure the amount of like stupidity oh, yeah. that goes on. Well, that's what I just think like if yeah. I had had Snapchat in high school, like what would I have done? Probably would have got, got a lot more dick pics. Probably got a lot more dick pics. Yeah. 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 And like, I see um, like a friend's younger sister. We've, we've mentioned this before, like talks exclusively to boys on Snapchat. Yeah. Talks exclusively to people that she's interested in and also friends. And it's like, it's like three words on like typed over like a picture of like the corner of like the one eighth of her face. And like- Really? So like sends pictures with captions all the time, back and yes, forth, back and yes, forth. That's how they communicate. Oh, interesting. I know. If we have any, any younger viewers, please confirm that or deny um, because I'm dying to know because I think it's really fucking weird. Um, <laughs> but I love that for you if it works. Yeah. I mean, listen, we're showing like, okay, boomers. Yeah. <laughs> no. Ugh, fucking okay, millennials. Boomers. <laughs> Whatever. No, but it, I, I, that's so interesting because I feel like it literally is made. I just wanted to, I just needed to confirm that they knew what they were creating. Yeah. Um, also, uh, just, to, just to circle back on that, if you send and take whatever, either of the two, nudie pictures and post it somewhere, whether it be on Snapchat or OnlyFans or Twitter, Instagram, shit on the internet lives for ever it lives forever because i am all about body empowerment fucking if you love your body and you want to show it fucking go for it i'm all for it but just remember that it will live somewhere forever 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 and there's and there's so much of the world that's so progressive now and like it would never affect if you got a job at some companies and it's just something that you need to keep in mind and make sure that you are conscious of what you're posting and just that you're consenting to knowing that you are not in control ow of that photo <laughs> anymore I'm so passionate about people protecting their nudes and their their bodies okay, and i'm just okay. beating shit up in the podcast room <laughs> got it great no, but it's, it's true. Yeah. If you post it somewhere, even if it's on your phone, like, right. uh, I, I hate to tell you, everything's connected to the internet. It's connected to the internet. It is completely hackable. Absolutely. And if iCloud's, wants, oh my God. If someone wants to hack you, they will hack you. So it's just like, be smart. Speaking of be smart, you probably should go delete a bunch of your shit on your um, uh, iCloud when we get done with this. What do you, no, I don't, I don't take nudies. Ooh, next topic. <laughs> Genuinely, any new that I've ever taken usually is for- I haven't gotten one. Yeah, it's Once usually again. it's usually for my friends being like, yo, my ass looks fire in this new bathing suit. And I send a photo and it's just like mostly butt cheeks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's mostly that. And you know what? If that leaked, fuck it. Oh, it's so funny. They're good butt cheeks. All, like the most like exclusive and celebrity photographer that I know- Yeah. Will do like boudoir shoots for like women, for like their husband, for like their- um, What's the book called when you go and take a bunch of nudes and then give it to your husband before oh, you get married? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Um, Spoiler alert, you're not getting one of those. That's <laughs> the whole point of this conversation. Uh, that was the whole point of this podcast. Uh, and he does it with Polaroids. Oh, I love that. Specifically because you can't make a copy of it. Yeah. Well, I even think about, cause someone was like, oh, well, like you could just take them on disposable cameras. And I'm like, someone has to fucking sit there and develop that, you doink. Yeah, you doink. <laughs> all right, hottest of all topics today. We keep ending the podcast with On, like, the hottest the most topics, fire topic. which I is know, like partially good because it's only the real ones. I know, um, but you know, all seven of you. Someone anyway. was yelling at me for last week's podcast that Moose wasn't in a pineapple because they saw Moose in the thumbnail. I'm like, bitch, you just outed yourself that you didn't stay for the whole pod. Ooh. You just outed yourself. Anyway, <laughs> did, uh, you you attended a few Sunday schools. I did, yeah. Um, do you remember that? Thou shalt not covet. No, I remember Veggie Tales. <laughs> veggie Tales, Veggie Tales, broccoli. broccoli. Oh yeah, it's very good. Celery, um, gotta be. And this was probably in there at veggie some tales. point. Uh, thou shalt not covet. Hear what that means? I I exclusively only know religion through Veggie Tales. Got it. Okay. Uh, Barbara Manatee. It means don't 
uh, catch an interest for somebody else's significant other. Oh. Because knock it off. I mean, that's fair. That's a good, that's a good rule. That's a good start. That's a good rule. Yeah, it's a good, good start. And I think that that applies, the reason I bring it up in that sense, that applies to so, so fucking much. And it's just like boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah. And just like it's, you know, you have to set boundaries on the internet because you do, because it's so easy to get swept away and like, oh, it's not real. It's online or whatever. I think the amount of people who get in a headspace where they allow themselves to like catch feelings mm-hmm. for either a, something that they're attracted to that they one, need to have a boundary because of their personal relationships, or two, start to get feelings for that online figure or whatever else right. in, in more of a lustful way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so incredibly natural. Right. Like, it's totally. not, it's Absolutely. not, no one's like going, oh, I can't wait to ruin my fucking life with this, <laughs> for sure. But like, you need to be aware yeah. of like your tendencies. Totally. And if you have that type of personality that kind of like blurs those lines, you might need to take two extra steps back. Right. Like, really, really, I feel like I know so, I, I know guys who are just super flirty, but that's Ooh. just like, they're, I mean, they're always just like, that's just what he's like. That's just like what there's, he does. There's he's guys just and girls friendly. like that. Totally. Absolutely. It's totally. And so it's like, yeah, those people really need to take a few steps back. Like if, if everyone's going one step, it's like you go three steps. But, it, and it's tough. Cause like I have had, I've had more, uh, I can't wait to hear where this is going. Oh, fuck you. I can't wait. I have had the unfortunate, um, Lay it on us. The suspense is killing me. It's fucking killing me. I've had friends hook up with my exes before. Oh, 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 that's not where I thought this was going. Um, I thought you were about to say something about, I've had the unfortunate luck of just being like 6'4 and really no. attractive and stuff. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. I've had friends hook up with my exes before. Yeah, that's right? fucked up. It is fucked up. Yeah. And for all of my weaknesses and things that I'm really bad at, I, I've been, I got a pretty good fucking record for not hooking up with my friends Exes, right? Whatever, for like, bro code, right? You know, it's not to say that I'm perfect. That's not one that I struggle with, right? Right. right. But I think that there are so many people out there that just like get in the gray area of like, mm. oh, I, I, I feel loved too, or I'm feeling something or whatever, and put themselves in these terrible circumstances and situations right. where lust for failure takes over. Yeah, it can Ooh. be. It's powerful. Have it's you, super powerful. Have you ever felt? like your significant other was being um, preyed on by your friends? Mm, not by friends. I, I've definitely like clocked that situation on someone that was more random that yeah. I didn't know. It's usually randoms for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think lust is something that's probably been, uh, I mean, it has, it has been around forever. And it's just like the landscape in which that it can flourish now with social media, I Ooh. think is just like, it's, there's just so many attractive people. I say this all the time on TikTok. I'm like, how can there be so many hot girls? How can be everyone be so hot? And also why didn't I look like this at 15? Like, what are you eating that you look like that at 15? And it's, it's just crazy. But I, I Girl, think- Women are getting way hotter. Guys completely staying the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we are such an inferior <laughs> fucking <Breed>. species. Yeah, <laughs> breed. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know. As a heterosexual, I don't know if I agree, but. Men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Babe, you're the shit though. You're the shit. Thank you. You're the shit. Thank you so much. You're the shit. Well, on that note, um, men ain't shit except for, except for. All the guys that listen to this podcast. All the guys that listen to this podcast. Of course. Yes, 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 yes. You are the shit. Um, also I've had, a, I've seen a few specific comments mm-hmm. of our men, but now uh, there's a new category. We've got a, a, at least a few gay men that watch the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love in the commentary. Oh my God. Gay. Shout out to the gays. I love the gays. It seems a little bra- abrasive, but okay. I do. Uh, you do. I do. I really you love it. I, I, yeah. Who has more gay friends? You or me? Ooh, I don't know. It might be close. I, I just, I gravitate towards. I think I do. I don't know. Mm. You know what though, but you come from music background and I feel like it, the arts yeah. flourishes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, that's, uh, it's a tack on from two or three weeks ago. You move out to LA, you realize everyone does cocaine and everyone's gay. And everyone's gay. And everyone's yes. gay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 it's yes, true. yeah. Well, cause I feel like a lot of people move here to live their best gay life while well, also yeah. doing cocaine. Well, it certainly, <laughs> certainly wasn't flourishing in the state of Kentucky. Right, right. Yeah. 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 I just feel like your life is probably a little better. 
Ab- here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, we we are so way off topic. Yeah, exactly. Um, this has been um the morning toast. I am girl with no job. And I am. I forget her name. She's really cute, and you got red hair. I don't know why it's blanking me right now. I'm the cute girl with red hair. Yeah, you're the cute girl with red hair. Her sister. Bye. Bye. <laughs>